All right, welcome back. Let's take a look today at an ECG, and more particular, a normal one and what it should look like. So you can see the little ECG machine sitting in front of you right here. I might zoom in just a little bit right there, so maybe you can see just a little bit better. And we'll take a look at what we have on it. So I've got my little leads hooked up, and I've actually I'm just using three today, one on each wrist and one down on my left ankle, and that gives us just a simple little quick printout. So I'm gonna turn the machine on right here, and there you can see the electric signals created by the body, and more specifically here the heart, are being monitored by this machine. Now think about what an ECG is, electrocardiogram. It monitors electric signals created by your heart, by your cardiac muscle cells. So what you're doing with this machine is you're looking at these electric signals, and we're gonna print them out on some paper right here. If you understand what those electric signals mean in relation to actual mechanical events in your heart, it shows you what's happening with the heart. Very good machine, non-invasive, doesn't damage a person. You can monitor or you can uh, detect so many heart irregularities with one. So notice what happens if I start to move my upper limbs. You can see how the waves just go crazy. The reason being, it's now picking up electric signals created by the skeletal muscles in my upper limbs and created by my heart at the same time. So whenever you hooked up one of these little ECGs, you wanna make sure that you're always sitting nice and still. I have my hands on the desk right in front of me. They're about abdomen level and so on down the line. So you wanna be just absolutely still. That way the only electric signals really being created are by your cardiac cells and not skeletal muscle cells around the body. So there we can see our little printout. Now I'm gonna hit the little, or we can see our little video right here on the screen and I'm gonna hit print to start printing paper right here. So I'm gonna remain still and let it print here for a short amount of time. Looks like we're getting a nice good little printout here. All right, I'm gonna stop the machine. Okay, and I'm gonna take these little leads off, that way I don't have them attached to me. And I'm gonna turn the machine off so it's not making all that noise. So here's the little printout that we just got right here. So if we take a look at what we have, remember on a normal ECG, and that's what we're looking at today, you wanna to always see three waves in a particular order with a particular timing and sequence. So if we look right here across the top, look at this little small bump right here. That's the P wave. This big tall one is the QRS, and this one right here is the T wave. So what you always wanna see with a normal ECG is a P wave, QRS, T. There'll be a little bit of a pause, and then again, P, QRS, T. A little bit of a pause, and then one, two, three, over and over again. So you always wanna see those three waves in that particular order. Now it's not just the order of the waves, but also the timing of the waves, right? So if we look right here at like P, Q, R, S, T, P, Q, R, S, T, and again, there's a little pause in between each one. This little P wave should occupy four tiny little squares on this printout. Now you can't see it, but on this printout, there are these big squares. And inside these big squares, there's five little ones going horizontally and vertically. Well, each one of those tiny, tiny little squares represents four one hundredths of a second. So that first wave, the P wave, that's where your atria, or depolarizing and contracting, should occupy four squares. That's how long it takes the atria to complete their contraction to push their blood down into the ventricles. So the first wave, the P wave, should occupy four squares. Each tiny, tiny little square that you can't probably see represents four one hundredths of a second. So four squares times four one hundredths of a second would be 0.16. That first little wave right there needs to represent 0.16 seconds. That's how long the atria need to do their job. So if you see that tiny P wave first, and it occupies four squares, four times 0 0.04, 0 0.16 seconds, that looks like the atria are working properly. Now look at the big tall wave, the QRS wave. Remember what this ECG is monitoring are electric events created by the heart. 
Well, there's way more cardiac muscle cells in the ventricles than there are the atria. So with more muscle cells generating electric signals at once, you get a much bigger, stronger signal. And that's why this wave is so much taller than that first one right here. So there's your tiny P wave. There's where the atria depolarize and contract. This wave here is where the ventricles depolarize and contract. Now this wave right here should occupy two to two and a half squares. Well, two to two and a half times 0 0.04, that'd be 0 0.08 to 0 0.10 seconds. That's how long those ventricles need to contract and push most of the blood out of those chambers there. And then lastly, we have this T wave. It should occupy seven squares. Seven times 0 0.04 would be 0.28 seconds right there. So let's again look at our ECG and the waves. You should see the P, QRS, T be a pause, and then P, QRS, T, and a pause. Again, the P wave represents the atria depolarizing and contracting. Now, when this QRS wave is generated, the upper chambers of the heart, the atria, actually repolarize and relax. Now, that's a smaller electric signal that happens at the same time as this one, but the smaller one gets drowned out by the bigger one, and you can't see it. But make sure that you know, when you see this big QRS wave, which is where the ventricles contract, make sure you know the atria are relaxing at the exact same time. So there's two things happening right there. And then again, that's our ventricles repolarizing and relaxing. So think about this again. Here are our atria contracting. That's where they depolarize. Here you can't see it, but the atria repolarize, which is where they relax. So you got atria contracting and relaxing. Here's where the ventricles depolarize and contract. There's where the ventricles repolarize and relax. So there's your ventricles contracting and relaxing. So think about this again. Upper chambers atria contract and relax. Lower chambers ventricles contract and relax. A bit of a pause and then the whole thing starts over again. So you wanna make sure you always see P, Q, R, S, T. Again, four squares, two to two and a half, and then about seven squares is what you ought to see for the average adult. Now, of course, this changes as somebody's moving around, they're younger, have a stronger heart, you tend to see some variation. That's a whole nother story right there. We're just looking at what's normal. So there's your three ways. Make sure you know the order and the timing. It's very important. Now, something else you can look at too is that the average cardiac cycle generally takes about 0.7 to 0.8 seconds. Well, if you wanna know how long one of these cardiac cycles takes to occur, one easy thing you can do is just count the distance, the number of squares in between these big, tall QRS waves. So let's see what we've got. Now this occupies one of the big ones, and remember there's five little squares inside each one of these big squares. So that's five, 10, fit right at 20. Well, if we take 20, multiply it by 0.04, look what we get, 0.8 right there. So again, that's right at the top of that average range for how long a cardiac cycle should take. And with younger, stronger hearts, all this tends to happen a little bit slower. In other words, all this stuff will be more spread out. Where you figure with a strong heart, it tends to pump more blood with each contraction. So the heart doesn't have to beat as often. So all these little cycles are sort of spread out. You figure somebody was exercising and all this was happening so much quicker, which is what happens at that time, all this would be compressed and everything would be closer together. But again, we're just looking at, say, for a resting adult. So again, looks pretty good right here. Again, you'd like to see these things a little bit more spread out. That's always good. Generally represents a good, strong heart. So again, P wave, QRST. Again, we've got our upper chambers, the atria, contracting and relaxing. Again, you can't see them relaxing, but there's another wave here. It's just created at the same time as this one, but the bigger one drowns out the smaller. So again, upper chambers, atria, contracting, relaxing. Lower chambers, ventricles, contracting, relaxing always P, Q, R, S, T in that order with that particular timing. If you see those three waves in that order with that timing, then they probably have a nice normal rhythm. But of course, somebody could wear a little ECG monitor for 24 hours because they might have trouble in the morning, in the evening, while they're sleeping, whatever. We just looked at it for a very brief period of time to see what is normal and what you hope to see. So there's our ECG and normal and what you hope to see. Make sure you understand those waves and what these electric signals represent as far as the physiology, the functioning of the heart.